Hello folks and happy Wednesday and uh, early Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, I wanted to share today, uh, I'm not going to pull a specific Bible verse, but just to talk about um, the early Gospels in, gen in general as we look forward to celebrating uh, Christmas. Uh, as we know, the birth of Christ, which was prophesied, went largely unnoticed. Uh, not much hoopla, no parades, uh, no great announcements. Um, it just kind of came and happened, and not many people knew about it. Not many people cared, not many people expecting. Uh, and that's sad. Um, however, in the Gospels, the people that are aware, it's interesting, the, uh, the response, the reaction of those people. Um, you take uh, Mary and Joseph, uh, for example. Mary, of course, is favored by God. Uh, Joseph, her betrothed, um, probably both of them looking to a regular Jewish life, uh, being devout uh, to their religion, uh, religion and their customs, looking forward to a family and working and such. Uh, and their world is turned completely upside down Nonetheless, their obedience to the voice of God, to the angel of God, their faith in God, superseded even what they understood in their tradition. Everything was upside down, but yet they followed uh, the Lord. Um, when we consider, uh, we talked last time about Simeon, uh, this man who was devout, serving the Lord, and his only prayer uh, was that the Lord would keep him alive until he was able to see the Savior. Uh, Matthew also briefly mentions Anna, uh, a, who spent most of her life as a widow, again, greatly anticipating the arrival of the Savior. Um, on the other side, we have King Herod. King Herod, uh, a wicked man, is known for having his own son killed. Uh, he is a murderer. And he has hunger for power and he wants to keep it. And as like most, uh, um, you know, Unitarian leaders or fascists or dictators, that power is most to him. And often in those cases, it leads to murder, sometimes a mass murder of others, as it was in the case of Christ. Uh, he pretends to have an interest, a goodwill to find the Savior as he expresses that to the wise men that come to see him. And uh, fortunately, they are uh, willing to listen to the voice of God and not report on Jesus' whereabouts. Uh, Herod is infuriated, um, and he uh, just has all these babies killed under the age of two, um, which isn't as hard to imagine in the days of abortion, but it is still just a vile, horrendous time. Uh, so you can see his reaction uh, to the birth of Christ, this threat to him. And I know we don't have any Herods in our listening audience today. Um, however, uh, Jesus does upset our kingdom, our personal kingdoms. And sometimes when he doesn't do things the way that we want him to, we can become quite angry and perhaps lose our faith. Um, consider also the shepherds, uh, the kind of perhaps the lower lives of society. These are guys that worked hard and long for little pay, uh, tough jobs bearing threats from wild animals, harsh weather conditions. And yet they are the ones that the angels decided to display their glory and announcing the coming Savior. Uh, glory to God, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. They got the real picture uh, of what was actually happening from a heavenly, a true perspective. This was a glorious time. His arrival was anticipated and celebrated, maybe not so much on earth, but certainly where it counts in the heavenlies. And these guys um, quickly get up to find Jesus, and then they quickly spread the word about him out of sheer excitement. But it's the, the lowly folks. Now, these guys weren't vagrants. They weren't unemployed. They were hardworking people, just not appreciated in that society. And that's who the Lord spoke to in displaying the glory of the coming uh, of the, the already here Savior. 
we think of the uh, wise men, and I know uh, we tend to think there was three of them because they gave three gifts, but we don't know how many wise men showed up. Uh, magi, kings, uh, it's described in different areas, but these were men of, um, of some uh, esteem because they even had audience with Herod in the first place. So they must have had some reputation. Men, uh, philosophers, astronomers, uh, those that studied, uh, but they sought, they were seekers. And when they saw that star, they came because they knew um, who Christ was. They knew that it was significant. They brought gifts. Um, so these guys, just uh, even though they were learned, um, a lot of times we think of education in a negative sense. So these days, because of our higher education institutions have, have gone uh, woke and crazy, and it's been that way for decades. But these men, not so much. They were, they were learned, but they were eager to seek and to find the coming king. So, you know, from, from people personally involved to shepherds uh, to kings, the reaction from everyone uh, a bit different. But, oh, I pray that we are anticipating his coming, his second coming, that we are looking forward, that we are prepared, that we are eager, uh, that the things of this world are not holding us back. Uh, on Casting Crowns, uh, they have a song on their Christmas album, which, in my opinion, is undoubtedly the best Christmas album there is. Um, I think it's called Why You're Sleeping, but basically it talks about uh, Bethlehem and how uh, here the, the king has come and, and no one even knows. And they put out a warning, too, that America, we've got to be watching and waiting. Let's not sleep through this time. Let's not be so occupied in, uh, in our own kingdoms that we miss out. But let's, uh, let's adore him, worship him, serve him. Um, and just uh, this coming uh, Christmas season especially. Um, thank you for your time. God bless you guys.